Uh, good afternoon to everyone. We're going to make a quick uh, change and we're going to start with the second lecture given by Professor Ruth Halpern Kadari. It's a privilege um, to invite Professor Ruth Halpern Kadari. Ruth is a professor of law, graduate of the Yale Law School, founding academic director of the Rackman Center at Bailan University. Ruth is a family law expert in both the civil legal system and religious law. And she served, you want me to speak to the microphone? OK, thank you. And she served for 12 years as a member, twice vice president of the CEDAW. She publishes on family law in Israel, legal pluralism, feminism, and halacha, and international women's rights. Her book on women in Israel was published by Pennsylvania University Press. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Tova. And um, thank you, the conveners of this uh, important conference, for giving me the privilege to participate and to um, offer my take on Rabbi Zach's uh, Torah legacy. Um, I titled my talk, Rabbi Zach's Torah, from a feminist lens, but when I prepared it, I realized that it would be more accurate to, um, to refer to it as some kind of a, a, feminist, a feminist reading of uh, Rabbi Zach's uh, Torah. And um, I should um, start with an uh, apology, although this is really almost a sin mideoraita to start a lecture with an apology. Uh, but I do feel that I have to apologize that uh, I'm really no expert on Rabbi Zach's writings, doings, Torah, legacy, but I am a great admirer of, um, of, of, of him. And when I, um, w when I was approached um, to offer this particular perspective from, maybe I can call it from, the, from a woman's perspective, from a feminist perspective, I was really very happy to um, take this uh, challenge upon myself and see what I can, uh, what I can come up with. And uh, I, I, have to, I have to admit um, that um, with the help of my very able research assistant who is sitting here, Shoshana, I really discovered some very interesting uh, things. And uh, I was also privileged to talk with, uh, with Miriam and uh, to understand that this particular angle was not really um, dealt with so far. So maybe with, with all modesty, maybe I could contribute something, uh, something interesting um, to, to, this, to, this, to this conference. So um, I think that if, if we were, if one were to ask how Rabbi Zach's writings and, and Torah and, and, and thoughts and, and machshava, um, how it could be uh, taken from a feminist uh, perspective, um, we should first divide between the halachic level and the philosophical level. On the halachic level, the questions are, are, quite, are quite simple, right? Um, the, 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 the way, the way to, to deal with it is to ask what was uh, Arav Zach's uh, halachic approach to issues that are clearly gendered, such as the differential religious obligations, mitzvot aseh shazman graman, ptor nashim mitzvot aseh shazman graman, and etc., etc., and obviously more so, um, all the halachic rules that are clearly discriminatory um, against, against uh, women. So what was the Rav's position with respect to those specific predicaments of Jewish women, primarily in the area of, of divorce, which is one of the areas that, that I specialize with, particularly the issue of mesoravot get and, and agunot. So that's on the halachic level. And then on the philosophical level, there is this huge breadth of, of Arav's philosophical writings spread over countless books, drashot. We, we, we have this counter outside the uh, conference room, uh, which contains only some of, um, of, of um, Arav Zak's um, books. So drashot, articles, um, from which we can try uh, to assess his take on women and men, on gender roles, gender differences, 
on feminism and particularly on Jewish feminism. So how, how to go about it? And this is actually not the only division that if we want to take this challenge um, uh, systemically, uh, analytically, there are more divisions within these two, um, two directions. Because uh, on the halachic level, maybe we should make a difference, we should differentiate and we should examine um, differently the, the writings of Rabbi Zacks and the doings of Rabbi Zacks as a leader and as the chief rabbi of, of, uh, of, uh, of Britain. Um, and on the philosophical level, there as well, I would suggest, and I would actually want to focus on that, that we should differentiate between explicit writings and then what Harav Zaks did not write about. Those areas where he perhaps left uh, unattended and, and un, um, un, unexamined. Um, that what, what I refer to perhaps, I would suggest to refer to as, as silences. Now, so I want to um, address first a um, few minutes um, the level of the um, of of the uh, of Arav, Arav Zaks as as an halachic um, leader, and um, here I'm very grateful to um, Rabbi Dr. Rafael Tsarum, who was really very generous in sharing um, with me uh, his own um, uh, rich knowledge of um, Rabbi uh, Zaks, and and I, and I really want to repeat um, the maybe explanation that uh, Rav Tsarum um, offered um, when uh, uh, maybe superficial, but, but not, not that superficial, examination of uh, Rabbi Zak's uh, halachic writings reveals that he um, did not explicitly address um, those areas in which I myself as, as a feminist as a religious feminist, whatever that means, and this is not the subject of, of this uh, specific uh, uh, presentation, so I would, I would have expected him as, as such a prominent leader, um, as, as the chief rabbi of one of the largest Jewish communities in the world, to, to take a firm position on the issue of Agunot, of Mesoravot Get, um, to, to, to go into the halachic um, predicament uh, there and to, to confront um, the blatant discrimination against women in these, uh, in these, in these areas. And, and, and there is no such writing by Harav Zaks on these particular um, areas. Um, and so here I, I go to what um, Rav Tsarum um, explained, that we do need, of course, to take into consideration the very um, delicate uh, position in which Rav Zaks was in terms of, um, of his role vis-a-vis -vis the uh, 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 Jewish community um, in, in, uh, in the UK. And as a pragmatist, he preferred to do, and to do a lot in these areas, um, realizing that it would be, or, or, or believing that it would be more effective uh, to work through education and not through exerting political power over the community. So. On the one hand, he edited the Women's Review, which was contained a very, um, you know, in, in, my, in my reading, a very harsh critique of, um, of, of problems relating to um, the position of women within uh, Judaism. Um, but then he did not continue to act on, 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 this, on this review. But whenever there were cases of Agunot, of Mesoravot Get, he did exert all his power to provide specific solutions to, to save these individual uh, women, including through um, uh, uh, um, channeling um, uh, resources to track down um, gvarim men who were uh, recalcitrant uh, husbands, and, and so on and so, and so forth. Um, 
but then also on the halachic um, level, there were some uh, areas which we could attribute a more um, kind of um, uh, egalitarian approach um, on, uh, from in, in, in his, in his uh, writings. And one such example is the um, ceremony of Simchat Habat, which he um, authored and became a standard, um, a standard text in the, <clears throat> in the Orthodox uh, uh, Sidur, and obviously his encouragement uh, for women to study Torah. And, and perhaps a more telling indication of, of his position with regards to women's uh, position and to gender equality in Judaism is his decision on which he writes about, uh, he elaborates on that um, in the book of um, uh, um, uh, the, the Great Partnership, um, to um, say Birkata Tov HaMeitiv when a daughter is, is born. And, and to take this as a prime example, as a prototype of a chidush, of a legitimate chidush within uh, Jewish uh, halacha. So this is a very interesting example, really fascinating, and I, I don't want to go more uh, um, deeply into that because I want to reach the philosophical writings, but it's really fascinating to see how he analyzes this uh, based on uh, his own rabbi, Arav Nachum Rabinovich, uh, in deciding to, 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 to take this uh, uh, blessing. Um, but then to stop with this, uh, Chidush um, on the um, on the verge of a conservative approach, which might have taken this one step further and supporting smicha uh, um, uh, ordination of women as uh, as rabbis. But 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 I'll stop here with respect to the um, halachic level, and I want to go to examine the philosophical writings and. Um, um, here again, it's a question of where to start. Um, so as I said, as an admirer of Rabbi Zaks, um, I first went to his um, collection of the drashot, of the sermons of uh, Parashot HaShavua, and also to his um, um, parshanut on uh, the Haggadah of, um, of, of Pesach. Um, and, and it, it appears that the only, the only place, the only drasha, where um, he directly confronts gender and, and begins the, the sermon by actually explicitly asking about gender differences is um, Parashat Bamidbar, um, where he goes through linguistic, li linguistic and etymological roots of the differences between uh, banim vebanot. He talks about the, uh, the mifkad, the, the, the census of, uh, of, bnei, of bnei Israel, and he uh, distinctly makes these distinctions between uh, ben, a son, and bat, um, a daughter, or, 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 or um, a, a, a girl and, and, and a boy, um, to establish gender psychological differences and gender roles. And then he supports these observations by looking at contemporary psychological research and very, um, I would almost say naturally, um, concludes with um, uh, presenting uh, Carol Gilligan's uh, approach to gender differences. And here we should uh, make a, 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 a pause for, for a moment and give a very, very short sketch of, of contemporary feminist uh, streams of thoughts um, to present Carol Gilligan's approach of a different voice, um, um, talking about or, 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 or confirming um, differences between men and women in terms of moral uh, thinking, of moral thoughts. Uh, men think in uh, a way of, uh, of, of, of rights and, and women's morality is, is different. Um, women think in terms of relationships and women make uh, moral decisions based on relational considerations. So this is sometimes referred to as um, the difference feminism or the feminism or cultural relational feminism. And this is usually um, presented in opposition to the um, more um, 
quote unquote traditional feminism or the early feminism of the of the 60s, um, uh, which which is uh, equality feminism, which is the uh, feminist thoughts that, um, um, that, that 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 argues with attributing differences and with attributing gender differences. And and it's really not surprising that we could um, we could ascertain um, maybe um, sympathy in Rabbi Isaac's um, uh, writing uh, with and, 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 and identifying himself with the approach presented by, by Carol Gilligan that, okay, that, um, that, that, that confirms uh, gender, uh, gender differences. However, if we, would, we were to take Carol Gilligan's approach um, until, until, um, until the end, she advocates that these differences should not determine the power relations between men and women. And she actually advocates for an androgynous model, saying that women should embrace those attributes that are usually um, uh, characterized with, with, with men, and men could and should embrace those characteristics which are usually attributed to women. And Rabbi Zaks, when he presents her theory and, and concludes in that particular sermon of Bamidbar, does not reach that conclusion. Now, um, I, I know that my time is almost, is almost up, so I, I, I want to um, say a few things about the book of Breshit, uh, the whole book of Breshit, which is actually um, the obvious place to look at if we were to um, see what Rabbi Zaks thought about women and men, because this is the book about relationships, right? This is the book about familial relationships, whether it is about couples, whether it is parents and children, whether it is about children's relations uh, themselves. And, and uh, 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 adopting a feminist approach would mean that myself, um, I would read this book and look for the hidden voices, the unheard uh, female women's voices within those stories of Breshit. And if I read Rabbi Zach's reading of the Torah, this is what I'm looking for. And unfortunately, I did not see this in, 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 in the story of the creation, Adam v'chava, um, in Parashat Breshit and also in the book of uh, the Great Partnership, the, there's a beautiful interpretation of the story of the creation, um, contradicting the usual um, narration of this story within the Christian um, uh, um, uh, legacy of, of uh, the original sin. It really offers a beautiful um, um, way to look at this, uh, uh, the construction of, uh, the, uh, of, of the, uh, the relationship between Adam and Eve. But there is no, um, no uh, um, attempt to go into uh, Chava's own um, feelings, understandings, thoughts, what actually drove her to uh, contradict um, God's um, uh, uh, d directive uh, not to eat from the uh, forbidden fruit, what made her contrary to the usual perception of gender roles, what made her the initiator of this whole um, story. And we could contrast this with other interpretations of, uh, of, of the book of Breshit, of the story of the creation. For example, um, uh, Professor Ilana Pardes, um, wonderful book um, of Habria uh, Lefi Chava, and I, I, I don't have time to do this uh, comparison, but, but, this, but this, this really goes on in all the other stories of, of Breshit, of Sarah and the Akedah. I mean, isn't this where it, it really begs to talk just a little bit about what Sarah felt when she wakes up in the morning and she sees her husband and her only child gone missing. And, and then, I mean, we all know the very famous drasha um, uh, 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 of, of Sarah's 
death uh, right when she heard uh, what actually um, happened. So, um, so, so this is another um, lacuna, another silence. Then there's the relationship of, um, of, of Rachel and Leah, um, and Rabbi Zaks does talk about the pasuk of uh, Yaakov, uh, I have it, uh, Rachel, you tell, you tell me Leah. Um, so again, it begs to um, examine, to observe, um, to just talk a little bit about what Leah must have felt um, in these, in these uh, relationships. And I, I, I could go on and on um, in, in um, offering this kind of uh, really limited and very, very careful um, critique that could come from, uh, from a feminist attempt to find out those unheard and hidden um, voices, um, predicaments, uh, uh, feelings, uh, interests of, of, of women within the Torah, within the halakha, within the Jewish tradition, and in uh, Rabbi Zach's writing. And I, I, I just want to um, uh, 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 conclude by, by saying that um, I really don't want this to be taken as, as, as um, as, as a negative critique of, of Rabbi Zach's legacy, but I want to offer this as, um, uh, with a question mark. Um, what, how can this be explained, that this great with this huge, um, really prime example of a Jewish leader and philosopher with such sensitivity, with uh, such a humanistic approach uh, of, of humanism, um, how come there is these maybe blind spots in his, in his writings, in his uh, philosophy, in relation to, to, to women? And my answer um, would be that um, it is a generational, um, a, a generational um, um, thing. Um, if, if, what we are witnessing now, and, and now I refer to a conference that we had at the Rackman Center just yesterday, a conference about uh, women's participation in the halachic process and women as poskot halacha, as halachic deciders. We talked about the Batei Midrash and also about the mixed Batei Midrash, about the way that viewing the halacha, studying the halacha, studying the Torah changes when men study them with women and are able to hear what women think, what women reflect, how women observe those texts that, that had been written and studied and, and taken upon by men only. And I really believe that if the late Rabbi Zaks had had the opportunity to do this exercise, maybe um, these writings and this philosophy would take a somewhat different uh, angle. Thank you very much. Yeah.